out as well. Um, you know, it's been a bit of a rough start, but we should be good to go now. We've got a lot of really exciting matches coming up today, um, so I hope you guys will keep tuning in and enjoy the show here. Game is live. Good luck. Have fun has been called there. And we should be just about ready with it. All right, let's try and make some sense of what they're going to buy here on Keyed Stars. It looks like uh, three guys going nades, one kit. So that's actually a pretty good catch-all approach to it. I like the HEs in case there's some kind of rush. So they're trying to counter that or take that off the table. If Flipside decided to just YOLO it onto a site, they're going to get a lot of shrapnel to the face. Whereas Flipside going for two guys full nades, he go full nades as well. Yeah, I'm really curious about that, actually. So uh, definitely a lot of grenades here in play and double smoke as well. We've got to wonder what they're going to try and execute here. One of them already put out by Hiko, and it looks like they are putting a lot of pressure right now on the A side of the map. But because the bomb is still really far back and it's dropped up in the hallways there, makes you think that this is all just for show. One smoke up and another one raining in. And we'll see if they can actually uh, execute behind this. They're going back to pick up the bomb now. I think it's going to be Markolov picking up the bomb in the background here. Yeah, he's going to get it, and that smoke will have cleared here on long. As we can see, Bolt's now trying to check this, trying to be a little bit safe about it, hanging around at the box. On the flip side, they've currently pushed two guys up onto the A site, and that's going to be Blade trying to sell this fake. Steel hits the headshot on Bondic, so that's one man down. Already a second one follows, ZQK hitting, a he hitting that HE. There you go, those HEs actually paying off here for Keed Stars. But it is not looking good for Flipside. They're just getting completely split apart. If they can get a bomb plan out of here, this would be huge. And that comes down to whether or not uh, Markov can actually land a shot here. Oh, well, Hiko is actually sneaking up on the bomb site behind them. And he did get one kill, but couldn't take down Fur. And that's going to be the end of the round in favor of Keed here. Double kill and steal. And I think one of those headshots was uh, on some guy jumping off the, uh, the, the plateau up there as well. So that was a pretty cool shot. So 1-0 and, oh, and a great start here for the Brazilian team. And as a response, they're going to pick up two uh, P90s, one MP7, a Mag7, and a FAMAS. So not too worried really about the upcoming armor Tech-9 buy that's going to be raining in here for Flipside. They're gonna yeah. Okay, Fallen goes under Plateau then. Yeah, that's, that's going to be really uh, clever for him. Get on the edge in case they try and go for the rush. Bam, this position is so solid with the shotgun. So definitely agree with that play. Flipside themselves, they go for a Tech-9 by Force Up as well. So they got the Kevlar. They, they're not skimping on anything, which makes me wonder a little bit. I would like to see Flipside try and prioritize the AWP for Simple, honestly. But uh, he's, he's not holding back. He goes for the Deagle. Yeah, they want to win this round, and they've already got the two kills in here. Markolov and Simple picking up one each, and it's going to be a 3v3. Now they get one more kill onto Sec UK, and it's up to Steel and Fallen now. Try and see if they can bring it back just a little bit here. Fallen inside the bomb site. That's a double kill with the Mag 70 turns to 180, jumps and almost gets a third one. But Hiko is still alive, and they've each got very little health here. One bullet is going to decide it. 45 seconds left, and Hiko's going to go down. Steel just manages to save that round. Very close indeed. And that double shot from Fallen, otherwise they would have probably lost this round right away. Look at his money, he's up to 6,200 after that. He got three kills with the Swag 7 in that round. That is, that is an obscene amount of cash. So Fallen, two for one shot, that's as good as it gets basically. He wins that one. And flip side, unfortunately their gambit does not pay off. They do make it very expensive for Keedstar, so there is that to go off of. But Keed not really wasting too much time. They get fully re-equipped here. And flip side just going for the P250s. Nothing fancy from them. And uh, putting that bomb out on the plateau early on. Like, really close to the edge. Fair, however, pushes out through A apartments. And he's going to pick up two kills. Bondic and Hiko down. And that's basically going to kind of shepherd flip side over here towards the B site because they still have two guys trying to sow confusion over on A, but it's just not looking wow. like it's going to work. I think Sybil just ate a grenade, and he's down to eight health, so not a lot that he can really do from here on out. No problem at all. Triple kill for Fur. And um, that's going to land Kita to third round here. The last one was super expensive, but because this one... They managed to survive with five members. It's not going to have such a big impact on the economy. They'll still be in a decent enough position. And on the flip side, you obviously said, um, because Simple went for that armor deagle thing, he's not going to have enough for an AWP. Be playing with an AK instead. So a bit of a delay on that, uh, on that super weapon that flip side do have. Yeah. Well, let's see, exactly. That's my main issue with it. It's just get that op. Simple, you don't even need. Like, go for the deagle, sure. Just skimp on the Kevlar. Like, just get money where you can so that you can actually afford to get the sniper rifle right off the bat, because the impact that this guy has, I mean, sure, he's good with the rifle, but with the AWP, he is, like, godlike. So a little bit frustrating to see Flipside kind of avoid that tactic for now. Cade Star is fully equipped on their side, and they still like to hold on to the Swag 7 and the P90. I don't know about that. That's kind of pushing it a little bit for me. Like, if you, one of your guys wants to get fancy a little bit, yeah, okay, you know, keep that, um, keep that Swag 7, but... Yeah, well, I mean, so many players have started using that P90. Like Fnatic do it as well. Flusher, so, yeah, yeah, Flusher does it. There's, it's just some players just seem to to prefer having it in a couple of situations like that. Flip side, because 
they didn't really get a lot out of the last couple of rounds here. It's a bit tricky because they don't have any Molotovs to clear any corners. So they're just relying on flashbangs and smokes right now, trying to see if they can get a gun. You can see Steel does have a Molotov to buy even more time, about 35 seconds now as Flipside are trying to make their way to that B-bomb side. They've got one guy, and it's obviously going to be Hiko lurking on the other side of the map, but he's actually missed this opportunity. First already flanking around here. Bolts and Fallen picking up a kill each, and it's going to be Bondic going down. Fallen just doing great work with that Mag-7, giving him a double kill, and Bolts will drop there. So now, for coming up from behind, and Hiko couldn't stop it. I'm not sure if he... I mean, I'm not even sure if he could have relayed the information would they have understood, but if he did hear Fur, then he obviously should have made the call, but... He could have been too far away. It looked like it was close, but uh, maybe not close enough. Uh, yeah, it looks like he's just going to elect to save the gun, basically. Too far away to really have an impact in the round. It was pretty much over by that time anyways, because Fur just went ballistic, man. He just went all, all out, gets that push, gets two kills, and now Kidstar is going to be able to get all the money. Like they, And I love this as well. They just go full incendiary. Like Once you get that money, they're not going to let Flipside go for any kind of rush tactics here. They aren't going to let them get cheeky. They're just going to go for the full out incendiary round. So any kind of a push coming in, Flipside are going to get slapped around quite a bit. Three guys have invested in Kevlar. Well, Hiko held onto his, but Bondic and Mark are making the, and Markov rather are going to be making the investment in this round. Simple, just the Deagle though. So that means that we should be seeing that AWP. You hope so, right? If they can get him to open the rounds just with that, it's going to be great news. Uh, Hiko. If he could get just a couple of kills in here with the AK, definitely be very important. He's got one smoke, so chance at least for them to get maybe a bomb plant. I love this vision from Fur up on the wall as well, just trying to make sure that he can uh, easily drop down if anything happens. And he's got a little bit of backup from behind as well, so generally he'd, he should be all right from that position. But a fairly slow round coming up from Flipside here is they're just essentially just hoping, I think, that Keed are going to take an early fight with them and maybe give up, give up another rifle. But it seems like they're all stacking up now and they're going to be pushing long. That's the only way, right? They're really, Flipside are hoping for the picks and Fair falls off that angle. He's going to get close to Markloff here in mid. Oh, pop flash in. This could be big if he hits the timing right. Markloff full flashed, and Fair goes right through, picks up one. It's going to be simple and Blade last two alive here. And, well, Fair, a bit of a surprise there. Hello, Blade. How's it going, mate? And Simple still got that AK that, uh, well, he got dropped for him when he died. So not a whole lot happening here for Flipside, unfortunately. He needs to see if he can pick up another kill. Simple going to take that fight, but the aim punch saves him, essentially. Fair going to be picking up yet another one. And that's 5-0 now for Keed Stars. But this is the big round. This is where we get to see the fun. And Simple's got just enough for that AWP. He could go Kevlar. Does he go Glass Cannon? No, okay. He's going to get Kevlar. Could have got some nades if he wanted to, yeah. but he's playing it safe. Well, great job right now on Keed. And the fact that they survived with so many members, that's two rounds now where they haven't lost anybody. It's going to make a really big difference in the, in the future here. So even if Flipside and start winning now, they're going to need to keep winning for quite a lot. Otherwise, it's going to sort of backfire on them really quickly. They've invested a lot in this round. Fur already going to be picking up Hiko with a good headshot there. That's going to put them on notice. Now, Keed can really play defensively, and I love the fact that Fur is falling back already. It's very smart. Yeah, not giving them any way to, to get that refrag for Flipside to bring it back, to give themselves an edge. Instead, he goes for the boost once again. It worked last time, too, because they didn't see him up here. So he can still have that element of surprise if Flipside try and push up underpass, trying to get onto that A site. But that's not going to be the case. Flipside decided to take over drop room. So you got to like the aggression there. At least they're going to be able to get that fairly free, although, as I say, that Bondic does take some fire, fire damage there. Yeah, I actually thought maybe Bondic was going to try and push up through the Molotov, which I think would have actually been a decent idea. Maybe he could have surprised somebody. They've got the drop room, yeah, but they're still boxed in, and they are also sort of slowly running out of time here. 45 seconds, the bomb really far back. Someone has to go and pick it up, and I think Blade just decided that that was going to be his job. If they push out onto the plateau, they're going to have to deal with Fallen and that Max 7 that's already taken so many lives. There's Bolt's gone down, Simple trying to push up and fall in the corner. Gonna pick up one before he burns to death, but that's a huge impact kill. He just dropped Simple and now Blade and Bondic are gonna be left. It's a 2v1. Bondic's gonna be the last man standing. He sprays down one pill, but he's got 20 seconds. He could definitely do this even if he hasn't got a lot of health. And he's got the Molotov as well. So this could be really interesting here. He can try and use that to buy time. It looks like he's gonna get into Hen Hunt, but he is trying to wrap back around a little bit, change this angle. He's getting a little bit more aggressive here. And so now can Bondic land the shot? Fair. He's got a few angles. So check, but Bondic shoots a single shot, and that gives it all up. Now Fair has an idea of where this guy could be playing from. You can see him trying to work his way over towards Connector. He's like, OK, and he spots the gun barrel. Easily done here. <laughs> Easy round. It's painful to watch. That position by Bondic just completely backfired. That single shot just cost him everything. Yeah, it certainly gave him a, a bit of a clue about where to look. But then the, spotting the gun barrel as well, that's just plain unfortunate. 
So a round going in favor of Keats Dance in that 1v1. Should that, I mean, now things are starting to look really tricky for flip side. We, we expect that if you're a team that knows how to play this map, you should win the majority of the rounds on the ter terror side here. And so this is the perfect start for Keats Dance. This is why they go CT at the beginning. They're like, hey, if it works, great. You know, if not, we'll make it up on the T side. But so far, things are just working out swimmingly for them. Like, Fair's on that 10-0-1 record right now. This guy's just... He's ramping up, and if Fair starts to get that confidence going, I mean, we weren't lying. He is like the heavy hitter for Keed. If he's already sitting at 10 and one what's the scoreline going to look like at the, even at the end of the half? We're only seven rounds in here, Anders. Like, this is getting nuts. Thing is, I'm not even sure Fair has been really properly tested yet. This is just, he's just like, you know, doing the warm-up right now. Yeah. I, you know, we haven't seen anything really crazy. Right now, he's actually just been playing some pretty good positions, but the kills he's had to get haven't been, like, really flashy. That can, that can still happen. Ooh, just go for the wall bang. Do it. Oh, yes, no, he's not going to do it, man. Damn. You All can right. tell he wanted to. A, a, a tiny part of him was like, should I, should I do it? Well, that smoke's going to fade any second now. So flip side, it might be a battle here between Simple and Tech UK. That'd be a great way to start. If, if Simple can get that early pick off on the enemy Orpo, they're not going to be in such a bad position. The fur still playing right next to that wall. Are we going to get the boost? I'm wondering. Because you can go for boost, but that is a bit of a deep smoke, so it might cancel it out. We'll see if Simple gets any luck. Yeah, he's going to be able to spot right over it here. Really clever stuff. Love to see this. It was VP who were, I think were the first team to really start using this in official matches. But look at the time here. 20 seconds. This is com is this a suicide mission from Flipside? I don't see this working out at all. Fur going to turn around with the AK. Does get a headshot onto Bondic. Bolt's going to take it down Markolov. And already this round has pretty much gone here. 12 seconds left. They will take down Sec UK. Maybe, yeah, they can get the bomb plant down. But still, keeping this bomb side is not going to be easy. They're a man down. And these do a really good job. They will actually manage to uh, just distract Steel there. So he ends up dropping bolts, picking up another kill. And Fur getting a good shot on Blade there. So the retake's definitely going to happen. A triple kill for Fur. And uh, a 7 0 lead now for Keed Stars. 13 0 and 1. Oh, God. Yeah, man. Home turf, right? North America, they're going to have some fans cheering in the crowd. You can already hear it. So, I mean, yeah, 13 0 and 1. This guy's off to a terrific start. 8 3 and 2 for Fallen as well, who's been doing good work. and. Uh, between Fur and Fallen, these guys aren't going to be ecoing anytime soon either. They've got a lot of money in the bank. But flip side, having lost seven rounds in a row, they're going to be able to get a full buy out of this. AKs across the board, but no AWP for Simple this time. And we have to see, it looks like they want to try and change up the pace here a little bit, maybe. Go for the straight rush. Hiko leading the charge. No fear, only dreams. Get out there fast. Steel's got the Molotov, though. And they're going to be able to slow things down, but Hiko opens up, taking that point man position. He gets two kills, and that's going to open up this B site. Now it comes down to the rotators, and there's ZQK chiming in, taking out Bonic with the AWP. But it's still a two-on-four retake situation, and Keed stars, unless they can get a kill right now, it's almost a save situation for them. Well, they got a lot of money, so they're not under heavy pressure. They can sort of hang around and try and see if they can get a couple of exit frags here. That might be worth it even more than to, to try and, uh, and run away early on, because they can rebuy all this equipment, no problem. Nice round. I mean, Hiko not stopping for the Molotov, just charging on in there. And um, yeah, switching up the pace. That obviously worked out. But for two exit frags, Simple and Hiko going to be gone. And he might get more. He's got another flashbang, or sorry, another couple of grenades in here. And Blade, is he going to survive? Just barely on nine health. Very close. Wow, down to five HP once that bomb goes off. But that was a huge play there. The he actually manages to make that so expensive for Flipside. Now somebody's going to have to full buy off of this, and it's not going to be pleasant. So no money getting gathered here for Flipside in their first round. And now that they've entered the danger zone, right, Anders, where it's like you win one, you damn well better win the second one, or you're right back to the starting board. So the, to the beginning, you're going to be back at 1,400 starting money. That is not going to be good for Flipside. Yeah, you say the second one, but I'd say maybe the next seven rounds, basically, <laughs> because um, they, they're so far behind at this point in time. They, they have to. I'm trying to be practical about this, right? You know, like, it's, it, <laughs> dreaming is a beautiful thing, but we got to look at the reality of the situation. Like, Flipside right now needs to show us that they're capable of actually chaining rounds together here. And so they slow down a little bit. They're looking for the picks. They're looking for Keed Stars to basically get antsy here to make a mistake. But Keed are playing this very passively, and I do appreciate this. Make them sweat. All the pressure right now is on flip side. They're the ones who are behind in this match. Yeah, the problem with the last round that they ran is that it's not so easy to replicate because you know Keed are going to be more prepared next time. So um, the players on B, right? Yeah, exactly. They they were ready for a for a follow up. Now they've left uh, their strongest player over here. We're in fur. Let's see if he can get one opening. Frank, he's going to call for backup, and then things are going to get really tough. And they are sneaking around. You can see Hiko setting up for a smoke that's going to land by the doors. And then Fur going to be pushing up. Timing is good, but Hiko is just a little bit faster. And he's going to get that headshot on Fur. And that's a great start now. ZQK trying to see if he can get a snipe on someone. But he actually falls off the ledge. And now when he goes to repeat, Hiko's going to be there. I think he was even halfway flashed. 
but he still picks up the kill. Fallen trying to jump in. This is essentially one at a time for Keith Stars. Doesn't look like a very coordinated retake or an attempt at a defense here. Just pushing him one at a time. Triple kill for Eco. Now the quad kill almost going to be the ace. Very close with the flick then, but not going to work out. Still big round and 7-2. Hiko doing a lot of work now, right now. Yeah, and I'm wondering right now what the crowd thinks of Hiko. Not a peep, not a sound. They're not amused. Hiko, you traitor, you're playing for flip side. What is this? <laughs> All right, well, quad kill for Hiko. That's him waking up, and that's what we were looking for here. Just basically the, the individual performance when it comes to him. He's, he's going to be in that lurk role, but it seems like he's also taking that point man role now for flip side. He's just like, you know what? I'm just going to YOLO in because... The information that you feed me, I'm not going to understand it anyways, so I might as well be the first man in, try and get some headshots, see if we can't open things up. But satisfying thing here is that Keedstars, they did, so, they did hold on to the AWP, but it's actually a pistol round coming out for Keedstars. So flip side, they got that second round, they should be able to pick up a third, and now they can actually start getting a little bit of momentum going their way. It uh, wouldn't be too bad if they could do some damage here, but if the economy is broken for uh, the Brazilian team, that might be a way for flip side to get at least partially back into the game. Be nice if they could uh, get up to an 8-7 scoreline at this point in time. He could going to be sneaking in here and we'll get a first kill. It's a good refry by set QK, but they should still be able to sort of just force their way through right now. Love this position from Steel though. Out of the corner of his eye, he's going to be able to see someone walking past and got to wonder, yeah, they're going to be looking at Fallen first of all. This is some clever stuff. But yeah, Fallen is really heavily exposed here. Simple is going to come around this corner, could take his face off, but no, Fallen lands a shot first. Good shot follow-up, though, from Markloff, and that's going to be Bolts now, the last man alive here from Keedstars. Already smoked down from Connector, so he's not going to get any easy times here. And with the CZ, he needs to just rush through and catch Blade, but Vonik watching the angle. Good, solid uh, after plan situation there for Flipside, and there's that third round. Still losing two, but that's not the end of the world. Vonik has got enough to be able to drop for his mates, no problem at all, and money will stay stable on Flipside. Whereas Keed, they decide to go for the buy, and it's a pretty solid one, actually. ZQK has enough. Even gets a smoke on top of the Kevlar on the AWP. Yeah, but now the tables have turned a little bit. As you can tell, Flipside are now the ones with a lot of grenades here. They've got the Molotovs and, uh, and also, of course, Smokes and Flashbangs. That means they're going to be able to root Keat out of a couple of positions, like they've been holding on the Plateau in a couple of rounds past. Yeah. It's not going to be as easy any longer. It's looking like a setup to get right out. They're going to start poking around here, and they go for the boost. Simple looking over that smoke to the back of the Plateau, hoping for somebody to take a peek. But Keat Stars, they're still playing this passive. They aren't going for... What could be potentially seen as like the standard approach, you know, boost somebody up there, keep them guessing. You need the challenge. And so Simple is looking for that, for that one man on the CT side who's trying to peek to get the info. The UK though, going to miss that shot. Bondic opening things up. We do have a second man here, however. That's falling with the Swag 7. He's hoping somebody's going to step close, but he gives away his position. He had the element of surprise, but now it's gone and Bondic hunts him down. Two kills for Bondic to open up the round. Yeah, and you see a clear sign of communication between Bondic and Hiko there. The whole idea is to double peek at the same time so that it's really hard to actually get the kill on one or the other because you just have a moment of hesitation there. Fur in a really tricky position here trying to fight. He's going to get a headshot on Bondic, but is he going to realize there's another guy coming up from behind? He actually gets out. Bolts gets a double kill before Markolov manages to stop him. So now at 27 seconds left, it's going to be Markolov and Hiko versus Fur and Steel. The bomb is dropped down in the bomb site, so they know, and Markolov sees it coming. Great job there, Fur trying for the flank again, and not going to be working out. Steel, though, can still definitely do this. 10 seconds, if he gets a kill on one player here, should be it, but it's not Hiko. Not wasting any time. We'll pick up the Brazilian player and make it seven and four. Hiko's starting to get his eye in. He is definitely waking up. Now he's leading the charge for flip side. He's got 11 frags. Definitely looking really solid here, whereas Fur is kind of slowed down. We still, we just, still saw a nice headshot out of Fur there from uh, lower ramp, but in the end, Keith starts. They're just going to get picked off, and it's going to be another round of pistol here for them, whereas flip side, they just keep getting more and more confidence. This is looking fantastic now. Hiko just getting, uh, getting a little frustrated, maybe. Decides to take matters into his own hands. Went very quick up on the plateau this time around. Keith is trying to see if flip side are going to go for anything quick, but Keith Star is sticking to the battle plan. As far as they're concerned, they are content to still kind of wait around and see if anybody's going to be peeking out from Keed. Yeah, it's kind of hard to deal with when you don't have any kind of uh, weapons at all. Single pop flash there on Fur. Maybe he could use that in the middle and they could set up something. I think he's got set QK down there with him, so wouldn't be too bad if they get the indication that someone might be coming up. Mm. A bit of a trick. But otherwise, it should be a clean round, an easy enough round coming out here from flip side. That means that they'll take five in a row. Certainly, it has to shake the confidence a little bit of the Brazilian team. They've got to be wondering, what is it that's not working that was just a minute ago? 
Oh, what has happened? And now you, you've already pointed it out. When they get the buy keyed stars, they're going to be light on the money. That's going to be a little bit frustrating for them. Fallen missing a lot of shots, but what is this? He's turned it around. He nearly gets the shot onto Simple as well, but Simple hits a midair and it's down to steal. A bit of a valiant moment there for Keed Starnes. They got the heart pumping a little bit, but it's not going to be good enough this time around. Flip side will be able to pick up that fifth round, and now we get the full buy coming out from Keed Starnes. Now we're going to have the incendiaries once again, and the AWP picked up on Fallen, not on ZQK. So that's an interesting choice. But really right now it looks like Fair and Fallen are the ones who are like landing the shots. The rest of Keed have kind of slowed down a little bit. ZQK, Bolts, and Steel, they need to step up and start picking up some of those kills to make, it, uh, make things a little bit easier, right? Get some weight off of Fair's shoulders. Well, let's see if it's going to be Hiko on that on, on flip side actually opening up some of these rounds again because he's been doing such a good job. I feel like if Hiko goes down early in some of these rounds, it's going to be tricky for flip side. Yeah. But if Hiko can keep playing at this level and then Simple can sort of you know start getting back to his own you know average level, then I don't know. It could, it could still be a scary match for uh, for Keed. Although I still expect them to do pretty well on the terrorist side. I definitely do. Waiting patiently. Let's say Fallen. Does he dare? He's worried about Simple being on the other side right now. And there it is. And Simple just steps in and lands a wonderful shot. Fallen just not quick enough to pull the trigger there, even when he was scoped in. So that was big. Simple, this is what he's capable of. He can take shots that he really shouldn't be landing. Like He, sh he should get into these duels, these situations that he should not be coming out ahead in. And he just lands the shot. Makes it look easy. Hiko spots out fair, so now they're aware of that boost. A lot of information and a lot of uh, solid play coming out from Flipside in this round. Sprays down another one that set QK falling and Hiko with the absolute perfect timing to make this flank work. His teammates are going to be able to push in on the other side. There's just 24 seconds left here. Steel will pick up the one kill, could get a second one on Hiko, who is a little bit low on health. So, yes, double kill for Steel, almost a triple. And that would have actually maybe saved the round, but simple. It's going to land a nice flick on Bolts. And it's going to make it seven and six here. Moving into the 14th round, a lot of money on flip side. They won't be ecoing for the rest of this game here, or at least the rest of the half. And Keed, on the other hand, kind of just buying up. I mean, this is not like a huge force up or anything, but. They definitely can't afford the AWP and not a single Molotov either. Yeah, they're looking for, they, they definitely need to have an 8, 7, or 9, 6 finish, I think, right now, Keed. So they're looking to take the risk. They're going to go for the early buy, and I'd like to see them go for some early aggression. They've played very passively so far. Simple's going to be point blank, tries to take the shot. That would have been it half a second later, and he would have picked off bolts with that angle, but not to be this time around, and some good nades to slow down that push. So Keed still taking the precautions. You gotta like that as well. In case some kind of aggression would come out from Flipside Keyed, we're prepared for it. Now they decide to slow things down again. ZQK pushes forward in a apartment. So I like this, man. Keyed are starting to get a little bit more uh, in, in Flipside's face. They can't let Flipside get too comfortable over here. Well, it's weird as well because I feel like sometimes your perspective on how a half has gone is depends on like you know what order the rounds are going to be get or got in. Because Keyed got seven in a row early on. Now 7-6 feels a bit underwhelming. You feel like they should have been able to end up at like, you know, 9, 10 rounds in yeah. total. But actually, I think 7 rounds is pretty decent on the CT side of this map. So, I mean, if they just forget about the fact that they've lost 6 rounds in a row, maybe they can still pull it back on the, on the terror side. But obviously, mentally, it's going to be a little bit frustrating at this point here. See if they can put up a good defense. Now, there's about 34 seconds left in the first holding inside. Set UK on the actual bomb side. And backup is not that far away. I think Fallen's playing in the mid-connector, so they should be able to get here with a solid defense. Now Flipside trying to push it. 24 seconds left. Fur are already spotting uh, out the first player and doing a bit of damage. Simple Blade, both a bit low on health here, and it's going to be Blade going down first. Following up, well, a couple of good kills happening here for Flipside, and actually they're turning it around. Fur is still alive, but he can't stop the bomb plant. It's going to go through, and now see if he can retake it. Gets a good shot on Hiko, goes down immediately. Markolov is already flashed here, but he's playing... From the middle, and Fur, can he just defuse? He doesn't have a kit, so it's going to take ages, and Markolov is playing this really well, not showing himself. Yeah, that's all Markolov has to do. It's Duck Duck Goose right now, and he is just... I didn't look at this. It's fantastic. Fur is actually forced off this bomb. Fur looking to find the shot, and he is not going to get it. Markolov there to clutch it out. He'd already run the, won the round anyway, but it's like icing on the cake. He gets the kill, and now he saves the op. They're going to be able to do whatever they want in this round flip side. Whereas Keed Stars, that's going to be a big blow dealt to the confidence. Because Fur, he tried to take matters into his own hands in the end there. Just tried to get forward. And he got the key kills that even allowed him to get on there. If he had a kit, that was a totally different situation. Maybe he just stuck it, right? Absolutely, because he starts off by throwing out a flashbang. So, you know, one flashbang, if you get a couple of seconds in there, maybe you just hold it down and hope for the very best here. Looking like a fast round for flip side. They're going to be charging in, but they stop right at the edge. And that was something that went horribly wrong there. It looked like Markolov got stuck on something and just instantly got killed. Still very low on health, and it's going to be a 3v3 here. 
trying to see if they can get in. Still no bomb plant, but they are on the site. And they have a lot more grenades to work with than Key do. Uh, Simple knows that somebody's behind the stone now. He knows he's going to be looking for that angle. That bomb's still trying to make its way onto that bomb site to get a safe plant. But there's first stepping in. He gets that flank. He gets the double kill. Perfect play from him. And now Blade just goes leaping through the smoke. It's all about him now. He needs to be the one to step up. And Steel's only got three HP. So if Blade can find the shot, he does. And with all the time in the world, he's going to be able to go over to that A site, get a bomb plant, and there isn't anything Fur can do about it. He is hot on his heels. He is getting the read. But Blade, this is definitely a situation now that he's, he's he can win this 1v3. Absolutely, and that would be huge. That would really crush a lot of Keith's confidence. That means they lost seven rounds, or eight rounds on the Rosary, if Blade can just land this one shot first, moving up. And there it is. He's just going to get the kill straight away. Was out in the open as well. Don't think Blade was expecting him to be that fast. So Keith will win the last round of the half and make it 8-7 in their own favor which is still a very good scoreline, but I don't think they're going to be too uh, satisfied. Oh, what was this? Like the, at the end of the half, it's like 7-7, seven, seven, and then the one, the one round where Keith Stars are able to make the difference, right? And it's always like that. When you get the, the team that has the advantage to begin with, yeah, you get a nice long line of blue, a nice long line of yellow, but like the team that has the advantage, they, they start to choke, they start to lose it, and then right, when it, right at the end, they'll come back into the game in a big way. But look at how things are going here. Fur, 21. 21-2-8 21, for him. And then it's just a huge drop to the next man in line. Yeah. Fallen with 12, 9, and then single digits from there on out, right? So right now, it, it comes down to those three players, I think. He, they need to start to, to, to start elevating their game. Whereas over on the other side, right, Hiko? 17, 2, and 12, just looking really good. Yeah, definitely. And what we're just seeing here as well is that there were a couple of really close rounds, especially early on in the game, where Keed could have lost it. And could have been a very different first half. Now, going into the second half, we do see the double uh, HE setup on flip side. Bondig and Markolov picking that up, and only two people with armor. And Steel, he's got the smoke right now on uh, on Keed, so he's already put it down over the by the plateau. I think he's going to run a bit of a distraction just to see how many people are there, maybe, and ends up dropping before he gets nearly any information. So dying is one thing, but if he had spotted a, a bunch of people there, probably Keed would have had some sort of play in mind. And now the rotation is going to be coming back out onto the A site. They've got that defense reestablished, whereas at the beginning of that, it, looks like, it looked like flip side to them. We're thinking, this is a B rush. They had rotated those guys off that A site immediately. And so there was a window there for Keed stars to take advantage of, but Keed, they don't pounce. They take their time. And so now, once again, they're gathered up in the halls, looking towards drop down room. They've got the bomb over towards B, and they have the sole man, Bolts, He's over on the A side. He's going to be the one trying to sell the fake this way now. Oh, they're rushing out into the middle here. Markolov is going to go down eventually, but right now it's on 2v3 and Keed. Can they actually bring it back and win this round? Be a great start to the second half. They managed to do it. Sek UK just playing ring around the rosy. Bondic, I don't even think he realized he was there. Finally going to get the kill, but now he's lost his teammate and he's going to be alone in a 1v2 with about 25 seconds left. He has to find Hiko, and Hiko's playing is so smart as well. Gets an instant headshot on Sek UK. But the initial idea that Hiko was having there is just, I'm going to wait until he tries to put the bomb down. I'll just try and play it safe, call for backup. So they were playing a proper 2v1. Pretty intelligent play overall. So that's going to be flip side now, 8-8. Eight, eight. And winning that round, you've got a wonder now, Keed. That's, uh, that's going to be in the back of their minds here. That's going to be eating at them for sure. They could have pulled out that situation, but also just losing a man early on like that. Seems like getting bopped is definitely not something that Keed are used to. They want to have the space to actually get their strats going, but if it doesn't start out strong, they seem to slow down a little bit. But now they're going to be taking a look at drop down room again. They've gone for the Tech 9, so it's about, we're, going to, we're about to get the demonstration of the flying Tech 9 to the phase, essentially. And we'll see if Bondit can hold off the rush. He's got his P90, so I mean, it's not bad up close. You can shred people, but there we go. Flash out, there's the jump. Two players holding onto, onto connector, and Bondit gets instantly overwhelmed. Gets within that lethal range for the headshot. Oh, Bolts wanted to put that P90 into work, but it's not going to happen. They just all get shot down. Double for Markolov, actually, uh, and a triple kill for Hiko here. So, decent round for Flipside. A good opening, but uh, they just couldn't make it out of there anyway. Nine to eight. What a turnaround. If I told you that at one point this match was seven and zero in favor of Keith, you'd, you know, you'd think, what? Yeah. Now we're at nine eight. What a comeback, basically, from Flipside. And what a comeback from Hiko, basically. I mean, it looks like he just got fed up with it all. He was the one who kind of turned it around from the flip side. So we'll see. I mean, he's still playing, I mean, close to drop. So Hiko can actually get something done over there. 
And with Bolts, I mean, Bolts has got that P250. He's going to be within lethal range, but here's Bondic holding with the MP7. They go leaping past, and yeah, just not effective at all. Good team play there by Key, trying to put, basically make, it, make use of the numbers advantage that they had going into that fight. And Steel is going to take out Simple to start. So we're into a three on three now. All three players here for flip side on the B side as well, but. Okay. A bit of an unfortunate team kill that happened. I think Fur managed to take out Fallen, but I mean, he probably was on like one health from the spray that uh, Bondic put onto him. So, apart from that, definitely looking good right here for Keat. And um, Hiko and Markolov are going to be left trying to see if they can salvage this round. It was close as well when Keat were playing on the on the, on the the CT side for this round. And Steel going to become a great kill on Hiko. Goes for the no scope. Not going to connect. Markolov runs into the site here. Bomb is down. He's got the health for it. But he has to find the players and kill them before he can actually even attempt the defuse here. And they're right underneath him. Markolov gets shot down. Fur picking up the kill and a huge turnaround here. Keed picking up that round. I love the fact that he was actually walking underneath him. Yeah, what was that, Markolov? I mean, the timing, the way that works out. Markolov has just got to be shaking his head. Nothing you can really do about that. It's just the way it works sometimes. And so he's not able to pull off the clutch. And now Keed, they get that full buy. They win an eco round. It's perfect. They're going to get a, they get a round jump, basically. Whereas Flipside are going to be back down to pistols here. Simple even going for the Kevlar. Okay, then Simple. Deagle, let's see. He, he's one of these players who can actually land shots with the Deagle as well consistently. Bolt's going to get tagged down to 36, so no headshot this time for Simple. And so that Deagle not really going to do too much for him. Blade up close. What? Yeah, it's a nice attempt. I like the fact that he tries to get into that, that one-shot range, but... I could have swore I saw like a nade go in there first, though. That was weird. Yeah, there was definitely some aim punching effect as well. Hiko, Bondic, and Markolov left, but it looks like Keita are about to take a 10th round and be the first to hit double digits, so not looking too bad really either. I mean, either team could win it. This seems like a fairly even match at the moment. Oh, but great work so far. At least Markolov is able to get one kill onto Bolt, so that's going to make uh, things a little bit more interesting here. Bondic is going for the backstab, and he's going to get up in the B-Hall, so maybe he can actually catch somebody out of position. I mean, Steel is already running back towards T-Spawn right now because he's only got the 4 HP, so he needs to get safe. Does not want to go up with that bomb. Bondic, unfortunately for him, though, playing a bit too cautiously. He's not going to spot the man out in the open. That could have been a free AK right there. So, again, Lady Luck just not having any of it. And if Steel actually peeks out from T Sniper, this would be hilarious. And it seems like he's walking sort of back into T Spawn. Yeah. But yeah, right, that would be, that'd be glorious. There's still a chance he's actually making his way back. So, is it going to happen? Is he going to look mid? Oh, well, Bond is going to be overwhelmed here anyway. It's, oh, are they going to stop? Yeah, there it is. All the way up from the clock tower. 10 to 9. And Keed Stars getting just a little bit of traction back into this game here. First, still doing the majority of the work at 23 kills and 22 on Hiko. It's become a fight here between the two players. Yeah, you got to love it, man. Good to see that Hiko still got the skill as well. He, like, he's just going in there doing his thing, so he gets to play his game. So he should be comfortable, but... It's good to see that he's actually getting those numbers out there. But Simple now, glass cannon AWP from him on this CT round and the key round here for Flipside as well. They need to stop Keed. Well, they need to stop them, the Brazilian team, cold right here. Not let Keed get any further than this. So, Fair taking that peek, seeing if he can catch anybody out of position. Bondic holding in Cubby, so nobody there. And it's going to be Blade actually taking that peek into the apartments over here. Just a little bit off on the timing, though. Not going to spot out the three players for Keed, but we'll see if he decides to go aggressive again if he wants to get that peek. It feels like they've left Steel behind over there, and the rest of the Brazilian team is going to try and make their move a bit more towards the A side of the map. Smoke goes off, so they can sort of almost compartmentalize all the connector area over here and just try and make sure that they can clean them out one step at a time without getting uh, killed. And we'll see if it's going to work out for them or not. And look at how passively Flipside are playing this. This is incredible stuff. They're really making Keith sweat. They're not giving them anything. Nobody on plateau trying to get the info. I mean, there is the, there is the, huh, the flip side of this is basically they better hit their shots when Keed starts start running. Because Keed right now, they're going to get all the space they need to set up. Here comes the play. Eight, well, 20 seconds left, and the A side is about to get crashed on because four players are just charging up the slope. Molotov's going on to that site, but Blade is still here, dancing on the edge, decides to take the peek, and he roasts alive. His timing was just off. Not going to pull it off there, and that leaves Flipside down to three players here, trying to rotate in quick, but Fair holding the angle on connector, and he's going to get a smoke down on Balcony as well. Wow, so actually what just happened is, the, I think Blade definitely had a good idea there, but he got, got the timing off by, you know, maybe even a couple of seconds, and ended up sitting in the Molotov and just burning alive. So, I mean, it's a nice idea to actually push out in a Molotov, if you know the timing for it well enough, because that way the other people just won't be looking there, but... 
not happening this time. The rest of Flipside are going to have to make their escape. And that's going to put us into the 21st round with Keed now starting to, uh, to really pick it up again. And I love that Keed are out hunting right now as well. If they can get these guns off the flip side, this will make a big difference. But they don't want it to be too expensive either. And Bonnet getting a double kill actually will make a bit of a difference here for Keed. Not trading a single man. So unfortunate turn of events there for Keed. But they're still managing to get the round on the board. And that's 11-9 now the score. So flip side, they don't have the AWP for simple. Again, man, he really it feels like he's been struggling to get this gun. Like he just needs to... Well, it's, it's just not happening for him, Anders. You know, half the time he doesn't have it, and you really want Simple to have that AWP. It's that simple. Or maybe he should be going for the Max 7 instead, see if, uh, if that's going to be a thing. For very quick up there, and instantly going to be falling back again. That's Bondic gone down, and a two-round lead here for Keed. Still too early to call it, really, but it seems like they're starting to gain a bit of confidence back. I love that fur. He's just like, I know exactly where you're playing every time, Bondic. One of these times it's going to work. I'm going to catch you peeking. He gets the opportunity. He doesn't mess it up. Fur just annihilates him. So now Flipside are going to start sweating a little bit here because Keed, they've got that man advantage, but they decide again not to push in fast behind it. They're taking their time. They still have all the nades that they need to execute pretty much whatever they want. And Steel already taking point over on Long B. Hiko has taken a bit of a fight with him, though, so he's down to, ten, to about half HP here, but. Keed now starting to work their way out, and Steel slowly lurking forward. Flash out, Hiko not going to find anything. He's still dancing on it. This is where you wonder, is he going to get the shot? Is he, is he going to get flashed out? Are they going to be able to actually remove him? They have the Molotovs, and they should throw at least one Molotov towards the back of Plateau just to make sure that they don't have to check these angles, and Steel might be setting up for that right now. Oh, well, look at Hiko. Flashbang timing is great here. They're going to walk right in. Hiko doesn't get a single one, but he did get a flashbang that actually hit three of them. So uh, could have definitely been, and as he falls, the bomb sign is 100% sure to go down as well there. Blade coming up from behind. It would have been beautiful if his teammates were still alive, but good take from Keed Stars there. Well, you got to give it to him, and wow, Fallen Man. He, that was just his round right there. Three kills for him in the end. Doesn't get caught by Blade. And well, flip side, that damage, that damage that Hiko took initially made all the difference. Imagine he gets that first kill and it at least turns it into a one-for-one -one trade. That could have made all the difference in that push. It's but scary if you, if you get the flashbang timing down and they line up for you, especially if you've got that AK-47. You, uh, you can kill a lot of people fast, but 12 to 9 moving into the 22nd round. It's going to be a single smoke here on Markolov. Simple is back with the Deagle. And Fur pushing in to drop down, but Bondic's going to get the better. He gets another kill in and Markolov showing up. Hiko taking down one. This round is working out great. Bondic with a triple kill. Absolutely Insane defense going on over the drop down zone, and Steel got to be wondering how did everyone go down to just that one player? You got to give it to Bond, or you got to give it to Fur. He's like, Yeah, okay, you think I'm quick? Well, then I'm just going to completely get ahead of you and get right up under that wall. So you go for that aggressive peak again, you're going to get punished. It's the mind games coming into play now as they start to figure out how each of them are playing the different positions on the map. But 12 10 is the score. Keyed Stars, they're going to get rocked a little bit, but they have plenty of money to get a full buy going themselves, so it's not a problem there. Flip side, though, are definitely going to be happy about that because this means that Simple, he's got all the money, and I love... Oh, he's right on the edge, but he's going to have just enough to get another AWP if they were to lose this round here, Flip Simple. So he's got some insurance now. You win an eco round, that has a huge impact on your money. Oh, quick flashbang out. Look at that. He didn't actually hit bolts, but that's still a very cool idea. I mean, it's also a tell in the long run. If someone's watching, you should know that Simple's going to get that peak, but... Still a delight to see him work. It's like he doesn't even slow down when he takes that shot. Yeah, it's like continuous movement, man. And that's the kind of aggression that we need to see out of Simple as well. And that's what I'm talking about. You give this guy the op, he will go take those fights, and he can get results. Most of the time, he is actually landing that opening shot. So Simple is just in a league of his own. And so flip side, that's the perfect start for them here. Keat stars now. The question is, what do they decide to go for? It's going to be the flash and a drop. Bondic holding close. He's going to have support from Markloff as well. All three of them just lining up instantly on that drop-down room. If Fur had come running around the corner, he'd have, he'd have been in for a pretty rude surprise. But there's Bonnet getting the peek behind the flash, and he gets a free kill onto Fur. Great initial shot, basically, to open things up, and Blade will find Steel. So down to two players here for Keatstars as they try and rush onto the map, onto this bomb site, but they can't even get out of Plateau. 40 seconds left. What's the play? Yeah, I'm not sure there is one right now. I love the fact that the flip side actually went aggressive instead of waiting, because if you let them stay in drop room, then you know they're going to try and coordinate with the rest of the team somewhere behind. So instead, they're just like, well, let's just pop flash in and see where they're at and uh, don't give them any room to set up any kind of advanced strats here. I think that's a good idea. It's a pretty solid play here on flip side, and it's going to put it back to 12-11, turning into a very close match here for the first of the tournament. Mm. Let's see. What? I mean... 
heat stars though, I mean, that's the question now. They tried to speed it up. They've tried to go for the aggression early. Fair, this time not able to get anything out of it. Curious to see if they decide to go for slow. Like, now is, is it just going to be in a straight up execute? Because one thing is, um, at least at the beginning of the round, Keat are getting a little bit of space to maneuver with. They have all the nades that they need to go for a play as well. So, I mean, options are there. I want to see them go for an execute, though. I just want to see them set up with the smokes and go for a straight up run onto a side or something along those lines. Problem is, is that if Simple gets another peek, if Simple gets another entry, then that's going to be. This is this is the problem where Keed is. They just struggle. They yeah. lose that man, or things don't go their way, and it seems like they're still trying to figure out what they need to do next to get back into the round, apart from just look for a peek or go for a rush. Well, they've managed to smoke off Simple this time. See how long that's going to hold for. He puts up a counter Molotov just to buy a little bit more time. Be extra annoying. But um, definitely, if they could put up a couple of good smokes like that, once they execute onto a site, it could definitely help them. And um, I don't know. I'd, I'd like to see them go for that B push, where you actually put up the smokes that sort of like cut up the B bomb sites. So you can get the bomb down. You can throw them from outside the hallway, outside B. I think that can work out all right. And then maybe just leave one guy lurking around drop zone for a while, but have the majority of your force push out on, on the plateau with the smokes. I don't think that's such a bad idea. Blade holding close to the middle here with the M4. Standard corner gonna get Molotov there, and it does spread. Oh, he's gonna go on a. This is very clever. He's gonna want to stand in the corner that they essentially just hard checked with the Molotov. Not a bad idea at all. It's like, okay, nobody's here, guys. Nobody's holding up close. Just come on through. And he's looking into the wall as well, so he's predicting that entry flash, basically. It's gonna come down to timing here for Blade. Simple starts off strong by taking out ZQK. There's the first flash. They check right, of course, and he gets the triple spray. That's how it's done. Perfection. And flip side, that is a solid round and such a great read from Blade. Right place at the right time. And you can see it, you just called it right there. It's like Keat starts, they're like, we check that left corner with the Molotov, so all we have to do is look right. And they pay for it. Blade one step ahead. Yeah, and in the future, you can be absolutely sure that if, if that same sequence happens again, the Molotov burns, but then it gets canceled by smoke, they're instantly going to recognize that and think, wait a minute, we should be careful here. Looks like it's going to be a very fast round here for Keed, and they are against rifles again. Even though they won that round, it's going to be oh, rifles on the Keed uh, side. Not too many, and certainly no AWP. Geeko on the back lines here. One grenade would at least kill Steel and probably do a lot more as well. Very fast round here from the Brazilian team. Hiko going to... Well, actually, Simple gets the kill. There's Hiko with the headshot, and Markolov also picking off the one kill, and no problem. Steel burning alive. And a double kill for Simple. Very solid round. 13 to 12. And now Key don't have the money. This could actually be flip side stealing this game back. I mean, look at this. Hiko, man. He just held from that A side as well. Great spray transfer. I mean, or at least control of the spray to get those two kills. Uh, he has definitely shown up to play. And now you're starting to get the other ones from flip side basically, you know, following suit. Keatstar don't really seem to know what they want to do with this. And the Molotov going down, not going to let them go for that straight rush. We are going to get set it up, and there it is. Puff Flash in, trying to make the rush in, trying to get that pressure. Simple going to fall back, basically try and change up the angle and support his mate. But Blade gets completely overwhelmed right off the start. Bondic will be able to chime in and pick up one kill. And Simple, what is this? It's like, oh, they have Tech Nines. Let me get closer to them. Yeah. I don't even understand. This is the kind of stuff that just does not make sense. He steps in and actually gets a kill out of that, though. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense to Keed either. They're thinking that's the last thing that's going to happen is someone pushing up behind us, but it works out just fine. Bondic with a triple kill. And you know what? Our prediction for who's winning this game is definitely off here because I think Flipside are doing a lot better than I was expecting, but I'm glad we got to call Bondic an underrated player because look at him right now. 24 kills, almost catching up to Hiko 25 and 25 on Fur as well. Simple, not doing as good as we were expecting. Mm. We need a lot more out of him. And that round was great, but generally... They need some, some strong opening kills, but they're still winning this game at 14-12, and Keed have gone to the double up setup, which they're pretty well known for. Yeah, real clever stuff now. This is them just trying to change up. They haven't used it yet, so why not now that they've got the money? And they may have the peaky angle as well here. Simple, just trying to see if he can catch anybody off guard. They smoke it off themselves, though, Keed stars on long, so that might get Simple guessing. Like, what is actually happening over here? He's looking for the boost, and I like it. He's going to look for shenanigans when he sees a smoke like this that doesn't make, well, it doesn't necessarily make sense. He's like, okay, you guys have got to trick up your sleeve. I'm not going to get caught off guard. That just allows Fallen basically to push out and get a, so a solid angle. He's already going to be pre-scoped if Simple tries to aggressively peek this. Yeah, last time, though, Simple was still faster, but he's going to go down. That's a very tight angle, actually, between the box there and Fallen going to come out on top. So Simple going down. 
And still some time left for the Brazilian team. 40 seconds. And they are bringing their bomb towards that A side of the map. And that's a huge problem for Flipside, as they only essentially have one person in Blade holding. Close by Markolov in the connector, but he can easily be smoked out. And then Blade will just have to come up big on his own. There's the smoke going in from Bolt. And now Blade, yeah, this is going to be a bit of a test here. Molotov goes out. He sprays down the first one, but goes down to Sec UK. Good refract there on the keyed side. Markolov trying to push him, but he's going to be dropped as well. Said QK picking him up left and right. And right now, Flipside are defending essentially one person at a time. There's no, like, joint defense. He last man standing in a 1v4. Shouldn't be possible, and he shouldn't probably even attempt it, but he's going to spray down fur. Maybe he's just feeling it. He can get one more. He nearly gets that angle right. Very close thing there. Steel is going to be able to get that wall bang through, however, and that's going to mean that Keyed Stars, they can keep pressuring in. Flipside do have the money for a full buy on their side, though, so it's not the end of the world for them. They can try and make adjustments here. And mainly, I think that adjustment is going to be simple. Uh, please win that duel this time around. Don't lose it to Fallen. Thank you very much. Yeah, that'd be a good start, wouldn't it? A key double up still going to be playing in. 13-14. And with that win from the, the terrorist side, it's going to be at least a, a bit more of an open game here. Proving that they can still hang. And towards the drop-down zone, there's a lot of players set up for the key team at the moment. Still right at the edge. No one there to pop flash him in just yet, but that might happen in a second. And the bomb is still back here, so... They are taking really slowly control of the, the B hallways here. They've at least brought Hiko down to about 50. Yeah, and, this, uh, and remember last time... Oh, well, look at this. Hiko gonna be falling back already. Doesn't want to stay, stick around for too much longer, and with that little health as well, one grenade, one good Molotov, and you're going to be out of there. Bolts, smoke on over, going to be going straight down, and this is what I was talking about. Smoking, executing towards the spawn site with the smokes, cutting up the site so you can get the bomb plant down, and that's what they're going for right now. Hiko playing inside the smoke, but for, or sorry, Steel will end up taking him down, and that's going to give them the advantage here on the key side. They might be able to tie this game. Look at all the... Uh, Grenades that they still have left on the flip side, but they don't get to use them. They go down before they even before that even happens. Bondic is going to be falling, and Steel does go down to Markolov. Simple, hoping for an opening and a quick flick. They're going to be taking down Bolts. It's up to Sec UK and Fallen now, and that bomb is not ticked for so long. They need to get these kills in. Blade going to go down. Fallen could have got trapped there, but he's actually still alive. Smoke is up. Yeah, Diffuse inside the smoke. It's going to go through as well. Markolov gets it before he drops. Sec UK with a good round, but not good enough. 15 to 13, and it's match and map point here for Flipside. And this is getting so wild. I almost ruled Flipside out at that point. Once Keyed Stars have managed to get control of that side, start pushing onto it. When the smoke's down, they take out Hiko early, who was the point man there trying to hold close. Thought that Keyed Stars would be able to lock that down easy peasy, but Flipside, man, they hit all the shots just right. And they played that 2v2 just perfectly in the end as well. So simple with the key shot into, uh, into Hut to open things. And now, well... We'll see if he can get more of the same. Last time he went for the peak in A apartments like this, it went aggressive rather, he actually pulled that off. But this time, ZQK is trying to pull a fast one. He's trying to get in position earlier on. He's already pre-scoped, just looking to see if Simple's going to go for that peak. And there it is. Okay, flash out, same, same chain of events. He went for the flash last time he peaked, and now it seems like he might have an idea that somebody's over here. There it is, there's the flake, and Bolts is gone. And Simple will open up things strong here for Flipside in what could be match point. And this right here, for anyone watching, I mean, anyone who's going to be playing a flip side in the future on this map, that should be such a huge tell. You hear that flashbang, you know, you know what's coming. So either try and stay away, smoke him out, do anything but, but try and face him. Fallen with a really good refrag there, taking down Bondic, and it's going to be going for more. He's now essentially infiltrated the lineup here for flip sides. This is a great start for Keed if they want to go for this B push. They got 40 seconds left, Fallen just has to stay alive, but they are pushing him aggressively. That's a nice kill for Markolov. That's going to help them so much. Steel trying to push in and sprays while running. Not exactly the best strat here, and he's down to 55. 30 seconds left. Hiko going to be sneaky out around the henhouse. Gets one, gets another one. It's going to be a triple. Hiko seals the deal, and it's going to win it for flip side. And I think he ends up top fragging as well. Really well played. Look at that high five as well. Hiko back in his element. And Natsu, man, watch it up there as well. He's got his eyes on this, thinking, okay, okay, we might have to worry a little bit here. Markoloff, though, I mean, coming through big in a few rounds, but yeah, it's, it's Bonnik and Hiko, the last two there, that did a lot of work for this team. Simple as well, but this is, I mean, this is not the start that we were looking for, or at least expecting. When you, when you bring in, you're not playing with your full roster, you bring somebody in who doesn't even speak your language. Yeah, what can we call this, an unlikely alliance? <laughs> like, the ultimate scrim. All right, but it 